before talking about this topic, uh, these papers, I would like to introduce something about the migration in China and uh, for my research on uh, child uh, migrant children in China. So you know, uh, originally in the uh, migration research, there are so many papers and uh, researchers just talk about the reasons why they migrate migration. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, especially in China, it's uh, very few uh, papers to talk about uh, the results of migration. So since 2005, I just conducted a survey on migrant children in Beijing to for, uh, as a panel study for them uh, for three years so that we can know um, how about the development of the migrant children uh, after the same migration? So uh, after finishing this paper, uh, after finishing this project, uh, I didn't follow them because they are graduated from uh, from the school uh, primary school and uh, and into middle school, and most of the migrant children just come back to their. Uh, original place or original uh, rural area, so that it's very difficult to follow them. And we find uh, that project is based on the, res uh, on the, how to say, the research focus is on the uh, personal development, but not on the uh, institutional or about the, uh, anything else, uh, at least uh, micro, uh, micro level. So uh, this paper, now turn to this paper. This paper is just to use uh, CFPS data, China Family Planning, uh, Chinese China Family Panel Study conducted by our uh, University. It's a very important uh, survey in, in China because it's just the first formal uh, panel study on Chinese families. Uh, it's very important. So uh, we just uh, use this data to uh, compare the four groups of the children, uh, resident children in rural area and the res res resident children in urban area and uh, migrant children and another type of left behind children that they just, uh, their parents leave and they just left behind. Uh, and it's very, how to say, it's a very, very uh, large number of the children in China. So, <clears throat> uh, the research focus is personal and the data is from the, the CIPS. So, um, my presentation will include the six part uh, background and the research question and the literature review and the hypothesis and the data and method and findings. Oh, in conclusion and discussion. Uh, in fact, I think uh, it's just uh, on the process of develop, uh, developing of this paper. Uh, it's not finished yet, but uh, some um, results are very interesting. So at first, I would in, uh, introduce the background uh, in this uh, in this picture, we can find the uh, number and the proportion of migration uh, development in, in with the year. So now it's about uh, how to say zero point two five billion, and in two thousand and five, it's just uh, about. Uh, 0.3 billion uh, migration migrants in China. It's account to about 20 percent in the total population. So, and among the, the migration or migrants, the form of migration are changing from individual to the family migration. That is, the proportion of the family migration total number of family are increasing. But in this uh, uh, table, we just show the uh, individual level, but not in the uh, in the person uh, in the family level. 
So during, uh, according to the six census shows that uh, migration migrants with spouse together is about 20, 26 point, uh, 26 percent, and parents with son or daughter is about 35 percent. It's very large. And uh, in the destination place among the uh, family with migrants, 64 are floating population household head and spouse. So uh, we just, um, this data shows us that the formation is just from the individual to family migration now. And uh, Migrant children and the left behind children also increasing according to the census. In 2000, it's just about uh, 0 0.14 billion, and in 2000, it's increased, and in 2010, uh, it's just about the 0.2 billion. So that means but you know, uh, it's uh, the migrant children, and uh, that is the left behind children. Uh, you know, just uh, when I came uh, came to Korea, the officials they have released that uh, just only nine point two zero million left behind children are here. The data is totally different. But uh, the reason is that they just uh, uh, change the statistical definition. The definition of the children are changed. Originally, uh, uh, six, uh, six point, yeah, this one, this one is just uh, from, from the uh, census data, and uh, nine million is from the statistical uh, official data. It's totally different, and the migrant children is just increasing and the left behind children is also increasing. So, as for the age structure, uh, we can find uh, it's just as a 2000 census, and uh, about uh, 27 percent are under five years old, and uh, uh, 40 percent of the migrant children are above 15 years old, and. Uh, how about the left behind the children? Most of the left behind children are just um, smaller or younger, just under the five years old, and uh, maybe this part during the uh, school year, or, uh, school age is just uh, not very high. Uh, in 2010, six census, we can find the micro children still has uh, this so that means after they just finished uh, middle school, uh, the migrants and the children just uh, graduated from or drop out from the middle school will enter into the labor market. Maybe it's related to Jan. <laughs> Sex, uh, sex structure in 2006, so we, maybe it's not very clear, but we can show that uh, this one is uh, migrant children. Or origin, how to press that? Oh, this one is uh, migrant just won't take out uh, and bring the sun with them. At the, des uh, at the destination place, just uh, left uh, the goal in, uh, at, uh, in the original place. And uh, after uh, 16 or 14 years old, the left behind the children just become the migrant children, so that the sex ratio is just dropped down after the 14 years uh, old. Okay, uh, many, many people say that, uh, uh, especially the many scholars say that migrant, uh, migration in China is not a floating population, so we call them floating population because they just stay in the destination for many, many years. Uh, but uh, in, in, according to the data, 
it's yes, not only the duration of the station, the duration of the stay in the uh, in the destination, but also the proportion is increasing. But uh, for me, I think there are another research I just uh, take just taken this year that is uh, most. Uh, for example, we just one hundred percent of the uh, children born in this uh, this destination place. Just only two to five percent of the children, uh, and at the age of seventeen, will still stay here. That means it's just like the uh, life expectancy uh, formal. So, according to the background, we would like to ask the question: How about the migration effects? Uh, child's development. There are two small questions. The effect of parents' migration on the left behind the children. It's the first. And the second is the effect of children's migra migration on migrant children's development. That means, uh, at first, uh, the parents would go outside uh, for work, and then, uh, if they can or have the ability to bring the sons or daughters just um, come to the uh, destination place, then the, my, the children will be migration. So, uh, this, this, um, these two are our questions. And uh, uh, as for the measurement of child development, uh, development uh, that include education achievement, health, and the social attitude in the last few years about the liter uh, in the uh, literatures. But uh, you know, as for the health, uh, it's very few paper just uh, combine the health uh, measurement into together. But just uh, for example, one paper just take one indicator to show the health. So that that means uh, so that we hope to combine the health uh, according to the self rate and uh, physical and mental just uh, three aspects into one paper to uh, compare the four groups. So this paper focuses on the child's health and gender difference, especially the child health's development in the uh, after the migration. The child of migrants include two types, just as I mentioned above. Literature, uh, there are many, many literatures on migrant, migrant children and the left, left behind children. I just conclude and uh, get some conclusions. At first, one is the uh, dropout rate is relatively higher, and the test score is relatively higher than the urban resident children. And the physical health of my children is significantly poorer uh, than urban resident children. Uh, poor uh, mental health and the higher depression level and the not consistent results on problematic behavior. Someone uh, says that higher and some, or someone says it's lower than the uh, resident children. And uh, the last one, um, children's migration has significant uh, positive effect on their objective well-being, but not negative effect on their subjective well-being, which means um, migration plays positive effects to migrant children. So that we can find uh, uh, conflict or not, not the same conclusion from the, uh, uh, from the literature, it's just the um, uh, left behind children. As for left behind children, they are, uh, the conclusion is uh, there is little difference between left behind children and the rural resident <coughs> children. And uh, so some agrees that left behind children have a negative effect or higher rate of risk of problematic behavior comparing to rural resident children. And uh, last year, still is not consistent results on mental health and gender difference. 
So we can find if we just want to uh, uh, study migrant children, we just compare the migrants with the resident children in destination place, but not compare the migrant children with the original uh, uh, original place of the, of the, the, the resident children. So it's totally uh, wrong of the comparative uh, group. So even we can um, even we can um, assume that there is a just a consistent consistent difference between the rural and the urban area of the, the, the children's development in the case. Uh, the inconsistent conclusion of the effect of migration on the child health is just due to the uh, four reasons. At first is the measurement or scale. Uh, researchers, uh, researchers just uh, use their own measurement or scales, but the, the measurement can't be compared. And the second is the reference group just I mentioned. And the data, uh, sampling and representative is much dangerous to the pol uh, uh, quantitative analysis because you know, if you just uh, not random sample, uh, it's difficult to represent the total population. So that uh, and, uh, many, many research just uh, not randomly uh, selection the sample. And another problem is the heterogeneous effect, uh, which is I, I just uh, paid more attention in the last few years, because you know, just according to the three principles from the uh, Yuxi's papers, uh, he suggested that there everybody have the heterogeneous effect on the, uh, to, the, to the same uh, experiments or to the uh, to the same stimu uh, stimulus. So that how to describe the heterogeneous effect is, uh, is uh, very important to test. As for the hypothesis, uh, I'm, don't, I'm not satisfied with the hypothesis because you know, uh, you know there are too many hypotheses. Um, in fact, I just want to say that gender difference, especially physical difference, is essential for for the male and the female. But the girls are better than boys. That is the, the, the physical. But you know, mental health and physical health and self-rated health. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I should be quick. So the data and method methods just are using uh, regression and the random effect model. Uh, because we just combined the two waves of CFPS data in 2010 and 2012. And measurements yeah, just including three dimensions, uh, self-rate health, physical, and mental. So uh, it's just a description of the self-rate, and the heat, and the weight, and the BMI, obesity, uh, morbidity, two weeks, and depression. So what I want to say is that the gender difference just uh, uh, only in the uh, physical health, but not in the self-rate health and uh, mental health. You know, yeah, I just a quick, quick review that. Uh, including the, the model in 2012, the gender uh, difference on physical health is significant. And uh, even we use uh, the random effect model, the gender effect still exists on physical health, but not on the uh, uh, mental health or self rate health. And in fact, we just compared the four groups of uh, child difference and the, the difference between the sex, uh, between the gender. And the boys' comparison 
So we can find the left parental children is much higher, and uh, including the migrant children and uh, urban resident children. And it's the same, girls is the same. And the boys in 2012 is, <coughs> is just the same. So, so I just want to skip to uh, finding gender difference uh, are shown in physical health, but not significantly in self-rate health, mobility, and depression. And uh, different effect of father and mother's uh, effect as a role in child mental health is just different. Uh, mother's education is just different. Father's education is just on the child mental health. Mother's just on the physical health. And the family planning and the, uh, different dimension of health have correlated each other. And uh, which is important, uh, in interesting thing we can find is that the regional difference. Uh, originally, we just uh, can, uh, can, uh, not uh, include them, but uh, uh, after the, uh, testing the model, we find that uh, the phys uh, physical health is eastern is much higher than the middle west and the western uh, area. But the mental health is Western is much lower or much uh, better than the Eastern area. That means so economic, de uh, economic development did not bring happiness. Uh, as a conclusion, the difference between urban and the rural, rural and the regional difference, but not the difference between migrant children uh, or the left behind children are the main characteristics of the child development in China. In, gen in general, child migration could be beneficial to migrant children, while parents' migration do not have a significant effect on their child's health, including status and development. And the migration, uh, migration plays different effect on the different dimension of migrant children's health, especially the uh, mobility. Such a, an interesting phenomenon to be worth to deep thought is the regional difference. Just I mentioned. Uh, comments. Uh, so there are many, many new questions about uh, this paper, I think, uh, even though we just finished. <coughs> Uh, it should be uh, refined again. And uh, in this paper, I think, uh, so we just compared the four groups, but uh, the four groups, the number of the children in, in the, uh, uh, the number of left behind children and migrant children are much less in the data. So how about the few sample to represent the large sample? It, it's, uh, it's very difficult to say uh, we should test the results again if there is any better representative data or better measurement instrument. And uh, how to deep understand the effect of migration on the child development? We should, uh, uh, I think we should uh, do something on theoretical framework and do some work on the effect path. And finally, the relationship between economic development and child's development uh, means that we should uh, more focus on the community construction. So, thank you very much. A very important topic, especially since my background is in early childhood uh, education, and we're talking about the welfare of not just children, but families in general. Um, in your presentation, you have made a, a point that there's a huge population movement in China, which has implications for the healthcare system and related social welfare policies for families. And what was quite interesting was the differences between males and female children um, and their physical and mental health. And I believe that has a lot to do with the importance of the family structure and the importance of the mother role and the father role as well. Um, but you also made uh, a note that there was a huge difference in the regional 
So depending on where they live or where they migrated to or where they were left behind, um, my question, I had, my question more than, you know, my comment was, is there any type of programs or interventions that China is addressing for these children and families that are left behind or where they're migrating to? Because I believe that a lot of the um, problems might be the lack of, for example, if the child's left behind, there is a lack of parental care or perhaps um, health insurance issues or the um, poor housing conditions or perhaps maybe just job insecurity in general that leaves these children um, without the benefits that they deserve. So is there any programs that China is doing to help these children and families, is my question. Yes. There are many, many programs or projects to help the uh, left behind children, uh, including from the uh, education system and uh, civil system. Uh, but, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the left behind children could uh, just live in the school if they just live very far from the school. Uh, or, um, for example, many, many angels just uh, have programs, for example, to ask the children to call their parents or ask the parents to call the children every week. So that there are many, many programs and projects. But uh, in fact, as for me, I think uh, it's very difficult to replace the parents' role in the development of the child. Uh, by other institution or other project or from the government or from an NGO's help. Uh, parents' uh, role in the development of the child, you know, can't be replaced at any time, I think. Yeah. So that, that is why I always think that uh, you, as a migrant, uh, it's better to bring out your child with you together, or at least someone would go back to the original place uh, to take care, good care of the child. Uh, but you know, in China, the migration is just uh, due to the economic factors. They just work for the uh, beneficial or for the wages for the uh, to improve the economic uh, of the uh, of the, their families, and so it's very difficult to do that. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much.